In the last episode, the now prominent Oda Nobunaga seized an opportunity to invade Mino province, home to his former rivals the Saito clan. And after six years of war, he would come out victorious, vanquishing his foes and solidifying a new alliance between the Oda and the Azai clan of Omi province. Now, in the wake of his conquest, just one year later, you'll be met with a new excuse to take his armies all the way to the capital. Although, in that same year, just to the east, we will also witness the inevitable destruction of the once great Imagawa clan. By 1568, Oda Nobunaga must have felt invincible. In just a matter of eight years, the Oda had become one of the strongest clans in the entire country, and certainly the strongest power in the central region. After having secured Mino province the previous year, his aspirations had grown substantially, and for good reason. After unifying Owari in 1558, fending off the Imagawa while also slaying Yoshimoto in 1560, and launching a successful takeover of Mino by 1567, it appeared that Nobunaga could do no wrong, as if fate almost favored him. That same year, he moved his capital to Inebeyama, which he chose to rename Gifu. This name was symbolic, as it was the same name as the castle from which King Wu Wang had set out to unify China during the 12th century. From this, you can kind of see where Nobunaga's mind was at. You see, being so close to Kyoto, and with his new Matsudaira allies guarding his rear, the capital was essentially within Nobunaga's grasp. He realized he needed to only reach out and take it. This would allow him to dominate the shogunate and Kyoto politics, as other clans had been doing before him. An ambition which would then likely be followed by a plan to seize the rest of the country, ending the wars and unifying the land under his sword. However, Nobunaga was cautious to march on Kyoto without proper justification, as he did not wish a coalition to form against him and suffer the same fate that Yoshimoto had met crushed before he could even step one foot in the city. Not to mention, he most likely feared his own clan's stability would likely falter should he invade without just cause. Surrounding him were certainly loyal samurai, yet if the Sengoku Jidai proved anything, it's that one misstep could lead to a massive internal betrayal. Although, it was a very precarious time in the capital, to say the least. Three years prior, the shogun had been assassinated, and in his place, the Miyoshi and Matsunaga had placed a puppet, the infant Ashikaga Yoshihide. Thus, Kyoto and the Ashikaga family were firmly in their grip. Although, there was one Ashikaga family member who still remained free of their influences, Ashikaga Yoshiaki. Yoshiaki had been a monk in Nara at the time of his brother's assassination. However, as soon as he learned of what had happened, he abandoned his religious life and sprung into action. Taking up with the loyal samurai Hosokawa Fujitaka, Yoshiaki began approaching various clans in search of finding a champion to aid him in taking the Ashikaga shogunate back from the Miyoshi. Yet, each clan he went to refused to grant him the assistance he needed. That is, until he came upon the Asakura clan of Eichizen. By 1568, Yoshiaki was being sheltered by the Asakura, as Asakura Yoshikage had originally offered his support to Yoshiaki. Yet, after years of waiting, Yoshiaki was beginning to lose confidence in Yoshikage. However, it was then that another figure entered the picture, Akechi Mitsuhide formerly a samurai of Mino province, who had served the Saito at one time. He had since left Mino and found service under the Asakura. Knowing of Yoshiaki's plight, Mitsuhide approached him with the idea of a new champion for his cause, Oda Nobunaga. 
with the knowledge that Nobunaga was a rising star. Yoshiaki immediately took the advice of Mitsuhide and sent Hosokawa Fujitaka to Gifu to request aid from the Oda. This was exactly the opportunity Nobunaga needed, as now he would have a legitimate reason to march on Kyoto. He eagerly accepted and took up Yoshiaki's cause, and soon his grand campaign began, just as Imagawa Yoshimoto had attempted before him. And as soon as Nobunaga had announced his plans to seize the capital and place Yoshiaki as the new shogun, the Rokaku clan announced their plans to oppose him. Although the Azai held most influence over Omi, the southern reaches of the province were held by the Rokaku clan. The Rokaku, like the Miyoshi, had dug themselves deep into Kyoto politics, and they weren't about to let the establishment of a new regime undo all they had worked towards since the end of the Onin War in 1477. However, their words meant little, as when Nobunaga's armies came marching, they easily swept the Rokaku forces aside. And with the aid of Matsudaira Ieyasu, the Rokaku were firmly held off, and the Oda marched unopposed into the capital. What minuscule Miyoshi resistance there was, was quickly stamped out, making room for the arrival of the soon-to-be Shogun, as Yoshiaki would eventually enter Kyoto, alongside his new ally, Mitsuhide. And before long, Yoshiaki would be officially declared the new Shogun. Although it was yet to be seen who was really in control, Nobunaga had just successfully claimed the capital, and it was he who had led the charge, his soldiers who had done the fighting, and it was his might that would truly come to win out. Yoshiaki thought this victory was his. However, he would soon come to realize he was just meant to be yet another Ashikaga puppet. However, turning back to the east, we can see things were not looking so good for the Imagawa clan. While they had previously been one of the strongest and most stable clans in all of eastern Japan, now, eight years after the death of Imagawa Yoshimoto, they were suffering. Under the poor leadership of Imagawa Ujizane, the clan had soured many of their relations with neighboring clans, and had even lost their most powerful vassal, the Matsudaira clan. And now, to the dismay of Ujizane, the inevitable fall of the Imagawa was at hand. Hostilities between the Imagawa and Matsudaira had begun six years prior, when Matsudaira Ieyasu seized the Imagawa Kaminogo castle. From that point on, the two clans were in a state of conflict. By 1565, Ieyasu would continue his eastward push and capture the Imagawa-held Yoshida castle. This would effectively push all remaining Imagawa influence out of Mikawa. However, it would also expose just how weak the Imagawa had become since Yoshimoto's death. Ieyasu, realizing that the Imagawa had little to no allies remaining, and their status minuscule among their more powerful neighbors, it was now time to bring their reign to an end. To do this effectively, and without concern for hostile aid from neighboring clans, Ieyasu began talks with Takeda Shingen, fresh off of his war with Uesugi Kenshin, where he had effectively seized all of Shinano province. The two worked out a deal, where Shingen would march south to claim Suruga, while Ieyasu would continue east to capture Totomi. Together, they would wipe the Imagawa off of the map. Thus, in 1568, the dual invasion began, as Shingen led his forces into Suruga. In opposition to this development, in attempts to hold off Shingen from growing his sphere of influence, the Hojo quickly sent aid to the Imagawa in aims of holding off the Takeda advance. Yet, it would not be enough, and Ujizane was forced to flee into Totomi, where he would make refuge at Kakegawa. However, Kakegawa would soon be besieged by the Matsudaira. All hope was now gone for Ujizane. And instead of taking his own life like a true samurai, he chose to give in to Ieyasu's demands. Ujizane surrendered Totomi to the Matsudaira. With the Imagawa now gone, their goals met and territory expanded, the short-lived alliance between the Matsudaira and Takeda came to its rightful end. One year later, Ieyasu petitioned Emperor Ogimachi to recognize his family ties to the Seiwa Genji, a branch of the Minamoto family, 
the original rulers of the first shogunate in Kamakura, a request which the emperor granted. Thus, now formally linked to the Minamoto, Ieyasu changed his family name from Matsudaira to now officially Tokugawa. This formal linkage between the old family of the shogunate may not appear important or relevant right now. However, it still remains a prerequisite for any daimyo who wished to become shogun, as they needed to be able to trace their lineage back to the Minamoto family. So then, why do this now? Perhaps Tokugawa Ieyasu was just growing his renown. Or maybe he was planning ahead. So, what can we learn? In 1568, Oda Nobunaga was considering a march on the capital. Yet he was held back due to the fact that he knew he required justification to do so. Yet more good luck would come his way when Ashikaga Yoshiaki would request aid in taking back Kyoto and placing himself as the new shogun. This would allow for a legitimate reason for Nobunaga to march on the capital, which he quickly did with ease, restoring the Ashikaga shogunate and following through with his agreement to make Yoshiaki the new shogun. However, Unfortunately for Yoshiaki, he was simply meant to be a means to an end, as he would soon become a puppet to the undeniable power of Nobunaga. In that same year, just to the east, the Matsudaira and Takeda would form an alliance in aims to crush the ailing Imagawa clan. With Shingen securing Suruga and Ieyasu taking Totomi, their victory would be easily won, and the Imagawa would be utterly crushed. One year later, Ieyasu would receive permission from the emperor to officially link himself to the Minamoto clan and take the new family name, Tokugawa. In the next episode, the opposition forms. As Nobunaga attempts to dominate Kyoto politics, the Asakura and Azai will come to stand against him in what will be known as the Battle of Anegawa. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.